What's up guys, JB2017 here, and I am so excited because Far Harbor is only a few hours away. To celebrate the launch, Bethesda has released a new video and a post on their site, along with the exact release time, so we can all start playing as soon as possible. In this video, we're going to carve through this giant info dump from the video and the post, but some of you may find the information full of spoilers. Even if Bethesda themselves have released it, there's some really dangerous stuff in here. So, if you're trying to avoid spoilers at all costs, I would stop watching the video right now. Actually, before you stop watching, I'm announcing that I will be live streaming the first three hours of Far Harbor tonight at 11 p.m. Central Time. That's 9 p.m. Pacific and 12 p.m. Midnight Eastern Time in the United States. If you're looking for a specific time zone, I've left a link in the description below that will convert to your region. I've also left links to Bethesda's new video and their post in the description below if you all are interested. First off, let's take a look at these release times, and these are rolling releases, so that means there's not one global launch time. It will come either earlier or later for you, depending on where you live in the world. So first, North America gets it at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time. The UK will get it at 12.01 a.m. British Standard Time, and then the rest of the world will get it at 12.01 a.m. Central European Time. And I think for that one, if you're on Steam, you'll get it at 1.01 a.m. So one hour delay for that, everything else should be the same on console and pc and if you need another time once again check the description below for a conversion and also some other times that bethesda has provided now we're going to switch gears and look at all of this information that they've shared again this is across the video and the text posts i tried to bring everything together that i thought was relevant and really important to share with you all so First off, we're looking at the environment, and really there's a lot of talk about how rugged and harsh the terrain is. Everything is rocky and generally unpleasant to navigate. You know, you're going to have these giant rock cliffs, you know, mountains is what they're calling them. I don't know if you can call that a mountain, but you're going to have these high elevation areas, which is something we really don't have a lot of in the vanilla game, which will be really cool to navigate. Also, of course, we know that the, you know, the location, Bar Harbor in real life, has the Acadia National Forest. That is also in the game, but all of the trees are dead. Everything is dead and this dangerous radiation fog just hangs over the entire island and apparently the entire island is radiation one of the lead producers said about this dlc bethesda also mentioned a 1940s horror novel kind of inspiration i think they said 1940s but in general stephen king was the inspiration kind of behind the eerie vibe and feel and spookiness of this entire island a lot of people speculated on that and indeed it is true since it is maine that kind of made sense so they also commented on that which is pretty cool kind of give us an idea of how eerie this place is going to be. They also mentioned this special device that keeps the fog at bay and away, obviously, and allows people to live, and the fishermen have utilized it. That is this device in the trailer. That's something I kind of speculated on, and indeed, that was correct. That's what this device does. You have to place it down, and it will kind of keep the fog out and make places inhabitable. We'll probably be using that for settlement workshops and making sure and establishing those across Far Harbor. We got new information about the town itself. So most of the town apparently is destroyed, and the townsfolk that live there live at the edge of the docks and that's where they have to live because the rest of it is destroyed we don't know why maybe it's part of the larger conflict with the children of adam or maybe just you know the fallout of the war in the last 200 years wear and tear something like that but we also have an idea of how the people will act and how they will react to us apparently the people are really rugged and they're fishermen of course before the war and they've survived because they are fishermen being able to kind of traverse this environment and whatnot so they are a rough and tough people so that's kind of the vibe we're going to get by talking to these people and talking to Longfellow. We'll talk about more of him, you know, towards the end of this video, but that's the kind of people, the kind of attitude that we're going to encounter and something we're going to have to be prepared for. Onto the new weapons, and Bethesda made sure to point out several new ones, although I don't think this is all of the new weapons. We've got a set of meat hook weapons. I think there's a large one that I pointed out in the trailer, kind of like the fishing gaff, but I think they're just calling it a meat hook. And then there's a smaller one that's kind of more fast and agile, depending on your melee style. Can't wait to try those out. They showed off the harpoon gun, which deals a ton of damage, 156 without any perks as far as we know, and so that's going to be a really fun weapon to play around with. They touched on the lever action rifles, which have a unique ammo that we haven't seen before, and also a unique fire rate. You know, you kind of shoot it and then cock it like a cowboy repeater, and they're apparently pretty powerful as well. I think around 50 damage is what they showed in the trailer, so if you can shoot those pretty quickly, that's going to be a potent weapon as well. Finally, we have the radium rifle, which is the weapon of choice for the 
children of Adam that spews out radiation damage as you would expect it to. And that's the German kind of rifle that was used in World War II, I believe. And I pointed that out in my new weapons video. And so that's the name of that little kind of submachine gun slash rifle looking weapon. It is the radium rifle. Again, I'm positive that's not all the weapons. I'm sure there are unique variations of these as well. So we'll have to explore and find those once the DLC is released. Bethesda also revealed its new highest tier of armor in the game called Marine Armor. And apparently this is the best armor you can get beyond power armor so power armor is still better obviously insane protection but if you don't want power armor if you don't want to build your character in a certain way to get power armor marine armor apparently gives you a ton of protection and it's the best armor besides power armor and there's also a children of adam variant with markings if you want to get that and represent the children of adam for some god awful reason i don't know why you'd want to do that but marine armor can't wait to get it next they talk more about the creatures the new creatures that we'll encounter in far harbor so we've got the gulper that's the official name for that weird gecko they, apparently they call it a mutated salamander and it comes in varying sizes so maybe we'll see some big ones and some small ones kind of running at us very reminiscent of the geckos in new vegas we also have the angler which is based on that angler fish that's something that i kind of caught on in their trailer and my trailer analysis so the angler will absorb the radiation fog and then spit it back out you in fireballs so that's going to be an interesting thing to kind of follow and you know avoid i would say in far harbor also this animal this creature disguises itself as a flower that's common to the island so it's going to be you know there's going to be a few instances in which i'm sure i'll be surprised and like whoa shit there's an angler fish it's going to be hiding in plain sight which is pretty cool we also know the name of these giant creatures now they are fog crawlers and essentially they are just mutated large mirelurks they look a little bit different more like shrimps for some reason but apparently they are taller than death claws and they have two large pincers so they're going to be formidable kind of enemies and i hope they are tough to bring down something you know kind of the compete with a death claw they didn't mention it or talk about it in the video at all but in the post they provided this picture of this giant lobster and i'm wondering if we're going to encounter this at some point in the dlc it looks to be pretty big if it's the size of a truck and so that's going to be a pretty cool thing to find out too they also touched on our new companion longfellow and he can be found in the local bar very early in this DLC I'm sure it's going to be right where we kind of land and of course the inhabitable place of the town is right at the dock so it makes sense that we find him really early if we go and seek him out and he'll be our guide to Far Harbor and he's not friendly apparently when you first walk up to him he says no you're not prepared for this leave go back but of course we're not going to do that and also we know that Longfellow from Twitter I think uh, Bethesda and Fallout have said that he's an alcoholic and also he fits the bill of that rugged fisherman kind of archetype that we have of everyone here at Far Harbor so not friendly alcoholic uh, rugged that's kind of the character that we're going to get out of Longfellow and he's old too that too Bethesda gave us a little more insight into the themes of this DLC and kind of what's going on with the story. So as far as the synths, the theme of these synths is kind of struggle with identity. Who is really controlling us? Is it, you know, whoever, whoever's programming me or is it my own true kind of feelings and what I want to do? That's kind of the perspective of a synth in this DLC. So they're interested, ironically, in keeping peace on the island. And apparently they're the only faction that wants to do that. The children of Adam and the townsfolk are really angry with each other and just want to fight. So the synths are kind of the middlemen kind of trying to part the ways and find peace here also they're hidden high in the mountains at what i assume to be the observatory from you know one of the images that, that they've released with this post so it's going to be interesting to see what these synths are all about and kind of discover who that mysterious synth is at the end of the trailer in this dlc we'll also hear more about the children of adam and kind of their motivations it's kind of been you know people are wondering why the hell these people worship the atom bomb and radiation they're completely batshit crazy i'm sure that'll still be the truth but we're going to learn more about their origin and their motivations and also there's going to be conflict within their group apparently and within groups in general that was something they also touched on as well finally perhaps the most important thing that they revealed is that player freedom is an emphasis with this dlc we can expose truths that may hurt other factions so we have to be careful about that that information revealed will affect all of the groups apparently which is awesome we'll have more conflict and more consequences that actually matter and there will be different endings with this dlc depending on which path you take I really hope that this means we can incorporate the other factions from the vanilla game into this. Maybe the Brotherhood has some kind of stake in this. Like I mentioned before, the Institute, of course, since there's synth involvement, I would love for that to be incorporated in some form or fashion. So I'd like to hear from you guys after watching this video. What are you most excited for in Far Harbor after watching this? And also, are you going to be playing tonight at midnight or whenever it releases in your area? I'd love to hear more from you guys in the comments below.
All right, guys, today we looked at a ton of new information right before the release of Far Harbor and Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel, so stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new or enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for Far Harbor DLC, my live stream tonight, of course, my survival mode playthrough afterwards, Bethesda.net mods, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.